Welcome to the Lost Signals Reviews, the American Film Institute's Top 100, where we critique the supposed 100 greatest American movies of all time. Join us as we decide if they're worthy of the Mox Top 100. Welcome to another episode of The Lost Signals, another AFI movie, another Marx Brothers movie. Mm. Mm. Tonight, number 85, A Night at the Opera. I'm Jonathan E. Manzer, here with Stephen Amosi. How's it going? Ha-cha-cha. Ha-cha-cha. And Scott Thurlow. Hey, nani, nani, nani. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let's get this over with. Scott, <laughs> do you have a funny lock line? I do. It's a... Uh... You guys are ruining Don Giovanni. Don Giovanni, who is that guy? You're ruining the opera. Oh, yeah. That is what we're doing. <laughs> All right. Well, I will go on to the plot for this. I'm going to do this as how I imagine the pitch for the movie went. It's 1935. Musicals are oh, the, the big uh, movie. It's a... Uh, and... A guy comes to the studio and like, look, I have an idea. It's a slight, uh, it's a slight switch of the normal uh, formula. We have a musical, but it's also going to be an opera. And there's going to be musical scenes, the operatic scenes. The whole plot line is there's two lovers in Italy uh, uh, who are opera singers, and all of a sudden this major uh, opera singer comes in and he falls in love uh, with Rosa, the female lead, and the opera, uh, the guy who runs the opera. Because he's so enthralled with this uh, uh, Laspiati, or is that it? Laspari? Laspari. Yeah. Laspari's success, and they decide to go over to New York, and the young man has to sneak aboard the boat and win back uh, the, the role of the head of the opera and the love of Rosa. And the, and the guy running, running the studio goes, it's great. I love it. How about the Marx Brothers? <laughs> and he goes, Marx Brothers? What do they have to do with this? And like, no. We're just going to insert the Marx Brothers into this film. <laughs> it's that <laughs> done. And Marx Brothers. Yeah. And that's what this film yep. really is. It's Marx Brothers enter, shenanigans ensue, and oh boy, do they ensue. <laughs> uh, and they're, they're helping uh, Ricardo, who's the young uh, opera tenor, uh, win back Rosa and make a mockery of uh, the opera scene. Yeah, like I said. They're ruining Don Giovanni, which yeah. no, it's not even the opera they're putting on in this movie. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is it is a good um, that that's a good description of what happens, and that then also the well Marx Brothers been. are there, what right? Like the Marx Brothers. I will say this: I enjoyed this movie better than Duck Soup, which we reviewed fairly recently, and I think a lot of it is because this movie can stand on its own without the, their like ridiculous comedy, and yeah. and like the thing is that they're at their heart a vaudeville act mm. and when you make i feel like i feel like when you make a whole movie about a vaudeville act like they did in duck soup it's greeting uh yeah it gets it, doesn't it, work. it gets old and especially to me i mean i understand like audiences love that type of thing back in the day they didn't and have like, better yeah, well who knows why but <laughs> i'm not here to speculate <laughs> but uh regardless i think that this movie did a better job of not being so – I think the word I used earlier was like frenetic about the uh, slapstick and the, the ridiculousness of the Marx Brothers. They were just kind of there adding their Marx Brotherishness to everything that was going on. But there was still an overall um, story and there was still an overall theme. I think I'm going to – I think I'm probably going to give this a two. For plot um because i thought that the love story was fairly good especially for like an earlier movie they can tend to be like a little more saccharine than this one was i thought that they did a good job mm. keeping it from getting too over the top with that type of stuff um and the kind of the um i don't even know what to call it like the like him stowing away on the boat and like going through all this stuff Really brings back like a lot of the the good older uh, romanticism of films, uh, so I kind of felt like that a little bit to me. So I, I like the plot of this. The Marx Brothers don't really contribute to the plot at all, so uh, I'm not like 
strangely enough, for a Marx Brothers movie, they're not really going to factor into this part of my score very much. Mm. So you're giving it a two, you said? Yeah, like, I think so. I guess. So I guess file this under Jimmy Stewart under shit that just isn't for me, like in general. So like, I do agree that, yes, it has a better framework than Duck Soup. So like, that's fine. But it's not, again, in my estimation, it's not saying all that much. And yeah, like I, like you just said, like they're not that important. They have like minor roles to play, like to help out the lovers that are trying to like reunite and like uh, get back in their role in the opera itself. But again, I just I was waiting for this movie to end, like halfway through. I'm like, oh, God. So like it's hard because I'm trying to remove my bias from that. In that, yes, it has a better framework, like I said, and a better um, initial structure for to wrap like the the jokes and the gags and whatever, all the bits that are going to be inserted throughout of it, throughout it. Which, yeah, again, isn't, as you said, like, as forceful as it was in, say, mm-hmm. Duck Soup and perhaps some other ones. So I was gonna get, originally going to give it a one, which I may still stick with, because it was fine. It's, like, a perfectly fine plot. One lover wants to get reunited with the other, and troubles ensue, like, and then they re- end up getting together via hijinks at the end. So I'm still, like, wavering on it or not. So what, what do you, got, well, what do you right, think? So I, I agree with the two, because... I'm going to remove the Marx Brothers from my assessment here. And let's just say I replace Groucho Marx, perhaps, and uh, perhaps combine Harpo and Chico into mm. another character. Just remove them. and Because they do have a, part, a point to the plot. They do are... Uh, without them, or without a, a character in their place, right. the plot would have uh, sure. sort of, uh, completed. However, this is a mediocre musical. I agree with that. And I don't I mean, like that's, musicals that's that much I'm not like a big musical person either, but like for the 1930s, mm. that style of movie, I've seen a lot of movies that didn't have the Marx Brothers in it, which felt very similar mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. this. And structurally, it, it, it worked. It was a complete film. Uh, I thought that it, it, it had three acts, which worked really well. Yeah. yeah and it's, it's not the greatest thing, but it's a solid, mediocre two. Yeah, I guess you guys are convinced me. Like I said, I'm trying to remove all like my distaste for this stuff just in general because it just isn't for me. I understand that. But I guess at the end of the day, like if we're trying to be more professional critically about it, then yeah, like it's again, like I said, and you guys sort of added on to a fine framework and it does it is complete. There's nothing like there's no dangling plot threads or anything like that. The lovers get together and they win their spot in the opera. There is one dangling plot thread. Although they try to wrap it up. The Marx Brothers should be in prison for a very long <laughs> I mean, time they should, after the... the that's <laughs> true. They should be in prison in all their movies. They wrap it up. Most of it happened in international waters. It's fine. <laughs> they, they assaulted a police officer <laughs> yes. with a frying pan. Yeah. Twice. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, no, yeah, like, <laughs> in general, to move on, before we move on, like, yeah, I'll give it, a, a, like you said, a fine slash mediocre too, because there's nothing wrong with it per se. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm, I'm trying to remove all the... Um, my dislike for it in general and just look at it objectively and I'll, I'll agree with the two not reluctantly but you guys convinced me a bit as you talked it out okay all right steve uh, themes yes <laughs> yes there are themes <laughs> so i was i was thinking about themes earlier and you know i guess there's the like love conquers all theme like vaguely over the course of this and mm. To a degree. Um, I don't know. Like, I feel like there's this... I I feel like there's something that I can't quite put my finger on that's, like, kind of a theme that goes through, like, Marx Brothers movies about the bizarre nature of fucking life in general and, like, just that's kind of what they were trying to be about like just live their lives about i guess Mm. um but i don't know if i don't know how to put my finger on that so i can't really call it a theme exactly but so there's so there's that there's those two things and i think that is pretty much where i left off on thinking of thinking about themes like i'm sure there's other things in here that are possibly worth mentioning but uh, i couldn't think of much else okay uh there's a very strong class discussion i knew you were going to say that because mm. that's what i was going to say actually yeah that's a good point uh, specifically chico and harpo are certainly within the lower class 
And it's really demonstrated on um, the boat versus the opera, mm-hmm. the uh, right. revelry of like the Italian peasants enjoying the, uh, the outdoors and the musical the music of that versus the, um, the the stuffiness of the opera. And Groucho is certainly exists between the two worlds. He's sort of uh, like he, middle class. Oh, it's weird because he has aspirations to be wealthy, but he's lower class in everything oh, else he and does. And he's mostly it's a con man, like, yes. to get there. Yeah. Oh, that's true. But his aspirations are, like, sure. yeah, he uses conning to get there. But uh, And he is actually thrown out of that class uh, <laughs> because of hanging out with the poorer individuals, mm-hmm. uh, his uh, brothers, although they're not they're his brothers in uh, uh, the, mm-hmm. this work. And it's kind of uh, sticking a thumb on, like, this... The idea of the opera, like uh, like mocking those who go there, they're tight. Like they're the high society. Uh, Laspari, certainly the uh, the performer who uh, thinks way too much of himself. The arrogant professional. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. Uh, he's the uh, the le- uh, the guy who runs the opera. Got got the. He's only. Uh, promotes him because of his reputation so it's not even talent it's reputation there that uh, i think that this is actually a pretty interesting look at that kind of uh, 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 class, uh tackling class actually you you are i am kicking myself for not mentioning that or, or yeah, it's really coming up with that fairly obvious as a theme to me uh, and you're right like it is an obvious theme and it's huge and it's there and I think it actually does. Uh, saying that, I think it actually does a pretty decent job of uh, portraying that throughout. Like yeah. just the examples that you gave are are great. Well, it's vaudeville mocking higher society. Yeah, and I think that's yeah. a lot of what vaudeville is about. I mean, I certainly agree. I mean, that's the one. Like, it's funny because we were both about to say that same thing because I certainly noticed the class division for sure. And I feel like that is true, or at least was true of of duck soup as well <laughs> to a degree, maybe not as pronounced. <clears throat> And then I, I think secondary to that is the one you mentioned, Steve, I was like young lovers, you know, doing what they can to try to reunite and be together and, and their friends and colleagues around them coming together to help them along to do that. Sure. But, so I, th- I do think like it was better integrated, at least the class thing, like, as you said, it's like them thumbing their nose at the hoity toities, mm. like those who attend the opera and like sort of like making uh, a farce of it. So yeah, it was, even though, again, I'm not going to be a, the biggest fan a lot of like the details and so forth and maybe this is style and the jokes and et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, I do think that theme was certainly clearly enough um, integrated there. And again, decently enough done for me to give it a decent one as well. And even in terms of the, the two lover story, right? That's like him trying to him being told by everyone else that he doesn't deserve her. And like uh, the, uh, what's his face? Uh, Laspari, keeps going after her because he thinks that he that the two of them belong together because right. they're both the you know main stars of the show and it's kind of this like love transcends that mm-hmm. gap type of thing sure uh yeah so i think it would be a pretty strong one actually for themes it certainly was in there and yeah i can't begrudge at that so i will also give it a one all right scott on to you with antagonist the Marx brothers of course as always <laughs> no i mean like i guess tied into what we just said about themes it's probably like Gottlieb is one of them, like you said, like he just sort of cynically wants uh Lespardo, whatever his name is, like the the big famous actor because of the draw he'll have, not necessarily like if he's talented or not. And like um who's the uh, uh Henderson the, is the cop, if that's who you're thinking of. No no who's the Lespar. No, no, Les, well, Les right, that's guy. what I said, but who's who's the actual like man and a part of the the love triangle, if you will. Sorry. The 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 lesser known um tenor. Oh, Ricardo. 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 Yes. Yeah. So like yeah, so he's like you know he's just automatically Gottlieb that is is automatically against him. He's like oh you're a nobody, so I don't need you for my troop, etc. Even though like he at at the end is shown to be have actual talent. Right. So I guess it's like you, again we can it'll be going back to the class division as I said like these ones who think they're superior and who deserve everything like automatically are trying to like prevent it and are always against the like certainly Chico and Harpo like the, the lower class. Mm-hmm. It's sort of quote unquote degenerates as they view them as and so forth. And like yeah, like and then Henderson, of course, is the police officer who is working with or that's the one that Gottlieb contacts when they get to America. So again, yeah, it's like them versus authority, like figures, right? More or less. And like they were fine, like for, for what they represent, I guess, I'll say like it was all right. 
it's funny because I'm guess I'm giving this movie a solid score so far. But I mean, <laughs> yeah. like again, I'm trying to look at it like you know critically. That I think they do represent that, and they were certainly like the whole m- at least much of it uh, is them like in the battle, like back and forth, trying to like outwit each other, uh, you know, trying to pull the wool over their eyes in order to keep their plot going, their scheme going to get the lovers together and to get him a starring role in the opera. So yeah, like the, that those are the ones I think can rep- like will be um representations of the antagonist and i'll give them like a fairly again decent solid one were they amazing no but they served their role and i think there was a clear division of who's the antagonist who you know the two or three again like i said authoritarian figures versus the um the sort of the scrappy lower middle class fellas if you will lespari was almost a mustache twirling villain yeah. but effective on that part. i think that gottlieb is a little bit more complex because not only is he a person who is challenging as authority figure, uh, like and like keeping uh, Ricardo down, but also he like it, it's not malevolence it's doing it's kind of a misguided look at what's mm. what uh, has value. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. But he's yeah. also a antagonist to uh, Groucho Marx by mm. trying to uh, win over uh, Mrs. Claypool. So yeah. I thought that Gottlieb was a little bit more of a uh, uh, more yeah, than two uh, more depth to him. Yeah, a lot of depth. To him, so I'm going to give it a one. Yeah, I, I actually I completely agree with that. Um, Gottlieb was good. Uh, Laspari was more of the mustache twirling. I mean, I, I agree with that too. Um, he reminds me of sorry, just real quick. He reminds me of like Neville Sinclair from fucking the Rocketeer, which is like, <laughs> almost like it's set in the same <laughs> era. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, you know. yeah, yeah. Um, and I guess. Uh, Henderson, the cop, uh, is like I don't even know if I would put him in as a full antagonist. He's or not just like, like corrupt or anything, but he represents like that aspect of society. Yeah. Right, he's always trying to root out the poor people and put them back in their place. But technically, yeah. he's doing his job because they are committing crimes. <laughs> right. Well, that's true. <laughs> they are committing massive amounts of crimes. Uh, so many felonies. Yeah, but. And he um, protects the rich at the end because once they have the nod of the wealthy to remain, he, true. Then he backs off. allows them to have committed all those felonies. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He, Just like real life. He mm-hmm. does. Uh, he is an idiot. He is a huge idiot. <laughs> like you can see what they thought of cops for sure. That's <laughs> um, <laughs> true. But yeah, I, I think that I think that the antagonists do a good job. I'm going to give him a one. I, I don't have too much more to add than over yeah. what you guys said. And, they fill the role perfectly fine, and yeah. it worked. Okay. So this is Marx Brothers movie. Oh, I'm on the protagonist. This is Marx Brothers movie, but they're not the protagonists of this. It's uh, Ricardo and Rosa. Uh, the Marx Brothers are the secondary characters in this. And mm-hmm. I must say, I was wondering what they were doing in this movie. Because <laughs> Ricardo, I thought, was actually a, quite a decent singer. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and a pretty, pretty decent actor. Yeah. I liked I liked him. In, uh, well, he played you know. the straight man very yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, yes. in the style of the times of the film, for um, sure. What's the other Marx Brothers uh, with the uh, Seco or something like that? Zeppo. Zeppo. Zeppo, Zeppo. yeah. He was the Zeppo of this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, like, I'm not going to – there's not much to say about them. Aside, they did it – like, they were a good 1930s, like, musical couple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Young was, lovers. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I actually thought that Rosa uh, – I never thought that Laspari was a threat to uh, Ricardo and Rosa's love. Hmm. And I liked how they showed that. I thought that Rosa had a lot of agency to her. And uh, Ricardo, yeah, they, they, were, they were good. So I'm going to give them a yeah. one. I will say this. I don't have much more to add, but I will say that I was kind of pleasantly surprised that Rosa had, like you said, a bit more agency. She yeah. wasn't depicted as like a damsel in distress the whole time. Mm-hmm. Like she had her own thoughts and feelings and so forth and uh, interactions with Ricardo and with Laspar too. She even, you know, she was like, hey, back off. Like yeah. we're together. You know, she she fought off his advances pretty well, and once she was let in, like what's going on? Like that he's a stowaway in the ship, Ricardo. That is, and like they're they're trying to get them together. Mm. She kind of helped out as well. Mm. So yeah, I was like I said, I think they did a good job of having them be protagonists. Perhaps it was even a smarter move to have the Marx Brothers basically be the supporting characters and not like take center stage if you will the whole fucking time. So yeah, oh, it certainly was. Yeah, like, well, like so, I think that worked better in this yeah. case for sure. So I agree. I'm going to just piggyback on what you said, E. That I will give them the protagonist spot, uh, Ricardo and um, 
Rosa, that is, and give them a pretty damn solid one, actually. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I, I I actually prefer the Marsh Brothers as supporting characters in a film. Yeah, it works best when they are. Um, because there's not... I, I don't know. I, I feel like if you give... Like, you need that straight man to... Or, that you know, you need that character that has more depth to them than, like, the jokes that they're telling. Yeah. Um, and I think that... You're right. They These two do, do a pretty good job. Although, like... They are, I, you know what? No, although they they do a good job, uh, and I I think that they together form a pretty solid protagonist yes. pairing. Agreed. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you guys and give it a one. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, Stevo supporting. Speaking of the Marxos, so it's the Marx Brothers, and like I said, I I actually like the Marx Brothers better than. I did in Duck Soup, for sure. Um, they still can be a little bit much for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Especially Groucho is just like... Sufferable? His, his like, non-stop one-liners... That just, aren't even that funny? Yeah, yeah. Just... Exactly. It's... I feel like it's... He kind of wrote, like, you know, I need to tell a joke every 10 seconds that I'm on screen or else I'm not doing my job right. And he his character, and the rest of the like the rest of their characters don't really actually that's not true. In this movie, I thought that um, uh, Chico and Harpo both have a little more characterization to them than they do, like slightly in more Duck Soup. But Groucho is still kind of like the cardboard cutout Groucho character mm. that he always is. Um, but I liked. Uh, especially Chico's character in this. And actually, I liked Harpo better in this until he started cutting people's ties again. <laughs> uh, That's his entire bit. It's a major part of his bits anyways. Go on. Uh, neighbor, but go. but they, like, they kind of developed. So like for a non-speaking character, I like how they developed this character in terms of mm-hmm. like they did the piano scene, the piano and harp scene, which is really cool. I'll grant and, you like, that. Gives them a little more depth. And like they had the high-flying acrobatics at the end of the movie, which is... Um, just interesting. I feel like it was more of like they wanted to put on this vaudevillian, uh, complete vaudevillian act as opposed to like a bunch of short vaudevillian uh, sketches yeah, that, yeah. that Duck Soup felt like. And um, I thought that that they did good in that. There's a bunch of other characters too. Um, you know, you have Mrs. Claypool, who you mentioned earlier, who is the same character or the same woman who played like the she might as, she's, same character she's the same in, actress and might as well be the same well, character she she and groucho have the same cardboard cutout stick yeah yeah, yeah and she was whatever she, she was, was there I, I i was annoyed by her the first movie uh-huh. i think yeah, the entire point is to be kind of annoyed by her i guess um and I, I i won't say anymore i mean there's a few more characters but i took all the most interesting yeah. ones already, I guess. But hmm. go ahead. I mean, that's most of them. Like you're right. Like it's the Marx Brothers, like front and center as secondary characters for sure. And yes, they were a little less grating in this one than they were in Duck Soup and possibly others. So like, I know it seems like damning by frame praise more or less, but they were more tolerable, I suppose. And like, I guess I'll give them a one. I'll probably take points away in style, and I'll have a rant about that when we get to it in a few. But for what they were in the term, in terms of the narrative, and what their characters had to do within that, they were fine. I I probably give Groucho's character a one, Chico a one. I just you're right. Harpo is just pure nightmare fuel, and like I don't even find like like whenever his comedy bits are like the least entertaining, if anything is going to be entertaining in terms of that in these kinds of films. Actually, his acrobatic me. stuff was pretty good. Yeah, but the thing is, was it even him? Like it's supposed to be his oh, character, yeah. but was he performing that stuff? It doesn't actually matter, I guess, but I'm just saying. Actually, I think it might have been it, because it, they, it, it they are crazy. Act, they yeah. were crazy ass motherfuckers back in the day. I suppose it could go either way. But just again, for, for what they served the role for is in this film, I'll give them again an all right one. So I'm going to bring up two sets of extras okay. in this <laughs> the Italians on the boat mm. and the gypsies in, uh, I forget the opera, the uh, ill. Whatever one they were putting whatever. on, yeah. Um, and it's strange to me that uh, Harpo and Chico hide b- at both times amongst, amongst the, this the lower similar classes, group, yeah. mm-hmm. and the w- their interactions, and in a sense, they're hiding amongst their own tribe. There, mm. I thought that kind of uh, symmetry 
is better than what a Marx Brothers movie should yeah, be. It's a nice touch and more like perhaps um, relevant than it should be on the yeah. surface. You're saying, and I think uh, most of the extras there, especially during the scene when uh, on the boat, and it f- felt uh, it felt like this was an actual group making the voyage across to America from Europe, yeah. uh, entertaining themselves. And when the, the, yeah, the guy making all the pasta, <laughs> the, uh, the chef. Oh, I, I don't know. It worked really well for me, so I'm going to give it a one, particularly for that. That's fair. Yeah, I mean, I like that. I don't think um, you. Like I said, I, I I like the I like the Marx Brothers, especially like in reference to Duck Soup. Uh, they, I thought that a little bit less was better in this movie, and I, and I think that they used their time better. Um, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with the one. Mm. All right, Scott, I'm interested to see what you're gonna put for this one. Dialogue. Mm. Yeah, it's tricky because like I don't like a lot of the Marx Brothers style gags. Right. Like I said, I admitted that. <clears throat> So, like, I feel most of them fell flat. Now, the issue that becomes for me is, like, do I think the rest of it, the actual dialogue, for, like, for example, between Rosa and Ricardo and, every, and everything else, when they're actually having conversations to agree, rather just being, like, hey, no, 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 like, all that, you know, <laughs> all the shit that you know the Marx Brothers for. So, it's almost like a 60-40 split in that, like, I, I want to give it a zero. Like, I'm leaning towards a zero only because of that, because a lot of it is them doing the gags and stuff. And... You guys mentioned that scene on the boat as well that may go to style, which I did enjoy because it was sort of like a bit of a left turn from what you usually think of mm. as a Marx Brothers gag. But every time like there was like these the snappy like, ah, I like I I can't even think of the uh, an actual joke, but you guys know what I mean when I start doing that. Doing is the crowd voice. in here or is it just me? Yeah, whatever. Like, yeah. Like hi, hey, hey. oh my back's still yeah. Oh dinner's already over. Like yeah. <laughs> all that shit. Like it reminds me of the Jimmy Stewart kind of thing. I'm almost slipping into his voice right now because like that's what it's like for me when I'm watching it. So <laughs> how much you hate Jimmy Stewart? Yeah, it's the best. <laughs> like I said, like some things this guy's just never any grudges Jimmy Stewart, Stewart and now Groucho yeah. Marx. Yeah, <laughs> Groucho Stewart is would be like my nightmare for you as well. But so like that's what I'm struggling with is that I didn't dislike the actual exchanges and like. I guess I'll say like the quote unquote real dialogue that is outside of the, you know, the gag, the rapid fire, like back and forth comedy bits. So it's, it's like, I have to balance one against the other. So I'll just say, what do you guys make of it? All right. I, I like parodies of Groucho Mark. I think parodies of Groucho Mark are funnier than Groucho Mark. I Marx kind is. of agree with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This thing is, I remember his dialogue versus any of the other dialogue. It was good. It was okay. Uh, but I just think if I appreciate Marx Brothers' humor, it's in their visual gags. Mm. I think a lot of times their jokes fall flat. And I tend to agree. That is what I carry with me from this movie. Uh, so I'm probably going to give it a zero. I was going to actually say very much the same thing. I don't remember a lot of the other dialogue yeah. other than the Marx Brothers stuff, like Groucho, uh, his one-liners, and um, and uh, so some of like Chico's, Chico's like mm. you know jokes playing off of Groucho. And then the rest of it's kind of rote, you know, regular old musical slash like '30s dialogue. It's nothing to write home yeah. about, I don't think. And for that reason, I'm probably going to give dialogue a zero. Not because I necessarily thought it was bad. I just don't... I, I watched it two days ago. I don't really remember yeah. much exactly. of it. So, like... That's well said. You know, I, I remember the, the general f- feel of the movie and what the dialogue did, but it wasn't snappy. It wasn't, like, memorable. And I... All I have in my memory about this is a thousand one-liners that nine hundred remember the line nine hundred ninety-four of them didn't work. You know exactly. Like yeah, not that I need that much convincing, but I'm probably gonna go with a zero as well. Like you said, like it's all wrapped. Like maybe it was engaging then, but it's again since they spit out so much of it and so much of it, at least to me, again falls flat. And this may bleed over to style of the comedy that they're trying to go for here. But I just don't. You're right. It just it didn't deserve a one, and I'm not gonna give it one. All right, it's on to me with uh, style. So I heard he mentioned that the music in this was fairly well done. Even though I don't like musicals, mm. it, it, it was weird because, oddly enough, it 
it was spaced both as a Marx Brothers movie and as yeah. a musical in a way that like exactly neither yeah. one was that overwhelming. There were only like yeah. maybe <laughs> yeah. three or four like big musical yeah. like bits or parts to it. And there, actually, again, I bring it back to this one scene, which exemplifies what best about this movie was. Uh, Ricardo singing that Italian uh, uh, song, right. and then it goes into the uh, Chico playing the piano and uh, Harpo on the harp, which was the best thing I've ever seen uh, Harpo ever do. Yeah, it, it I was agree phenomenal. with that. And actually, this is why he got his name. I actually loved Harpo's uh, piano part too, yeah, where he comes on the piano right before and uh, like but that was kind of does the hand like stick stuff. Yeah, but like yeah. I, I enjoyed that uh, yeah. more so than most of the others. Oh, anyway, sure. Come on. So. Overall, again, a lot of their visual guests, some of it didn't work for me, but some of them really actually worked for me, uh, especially the ending scene when they're doing the acrobatics mm. around mm. the opera was actually really impressive. Even if it, whether it was Harpo or not, it was impressive the way that they choreographed and all of the scenes falling down on the stage. At the yeah. I actually thought that was pretty funny. Uh, so, yeah, like stylistically, for a Mars Brothers movie, there are moments I enjoyed in it. And as a musical, there are mm-hmm. moments I enjoyed in it. And both of those I probably normally don't say. Yeah. No, it's funny because I <laughs> I might follow suit. But you're right. Like, I, I was going to take a book, uh, a page from your book. You can be like, does it, excuse me, work as a comedy? Mm. Now, not for me personally, but I don't think there's, it's not because like <laughs> the, the the shots or anything were were wrong or like were fucked up or didn't make any sense. Just that I don't prefer it. However, again, I can't necessarily use that as ammo against the film. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, and you're right, I got, I actually did also enjoy the um the big finale. So like when this when he's up on the rope, so like all like they're supposed to be doing like like a medieval set opera or whatever, and there's like a bus in the city or whatever, like <laughs> yeah. coming up and down. Like the battleship that, and comes like, yeah, down. That, that actually was pretty good. It that, worked quite well. All and the cops. That climbing. was actually pretty funny. Like yeah. one of the yeah. one of the funnier parts of the movie. Like exactly. I agree. And I was yeah. I was also a bit surprised or like I wasn't expecting the um the piano parts on the boat and, mm. and then the harp uh, solo, if you will, as well. It's mm. so, like, yeah, all that was fine. And maybe because going back to plot that since it had more of a structure, then it moved along at a nicer pace mm. and it didn't feel as like sloggy than perhaps like duck soup for sure. I know we keep comparing it to it, but that's the other one we did that was on, that's on the FI list. So yeah, like again, not quite a begrudging one, but I have to give it the, the respect slash credit. It, mostly deserves and i will give it a, a decent one for style as well even if i don't enjoy personally a lot of the humor but it still worked as a film and cinematography wise i guess i'll say yeah I, I i i gotta say i give this a pretty strong one stylistically uh where in in the parts where i was not and again we're going back to duck soup but like in the parts where i was not impressed with duck soup and like felt kind of overblown or like just i cringeworthy yeah. in that movie this movie felt like they kind of nailed a lot of that stuff that they wanted to do and like you said the musical scenes are great and there's not that many of them which for, also i think is a credit for a it. musical but yeah. like i if you even want to call this a music, i guess i guess it is but like it's a very understated in mm. terms of being a musical yeah. and but the musical s- scenes that they do do <laughs> are great um and like you said, the acrobatics at the end, the, um, you haven't mentioned this yet, but you mentioned it beforehand and I want to bring it up. Oh, go ahead. The, uh, the scene where they get everybody in that room, uh, oh, like and like people ship. just keeping, yeah, people just keep coming into Groucho's little tiny room. I actually thought that was pretty funny. Uh, and like I said, I thought the part at the end where like the backdrops keep going up and down or it was pretty funny. So like there, there were scenes in this that I really enjoyed. I feel that the the uh, the room scene, they didn't know how to end it because the <laughs> well, punchline fall out fell flat. Yeah, and I thought it could have been better, but as it was going on, the I build was up like, was I really fairly solid. Like, yes, yes. I completely agree with that. Yeah. Like the the falling out part at the end was like not the best letting out of all that <laughs> tension that they were building up, but uh, but that whole build up was great and yeah. like you know. That was one of the. I mean, that's it's it's like this early film, uh, building the film library yeah. of like f- physical humor, and like that was one of the things that you're like you watch this movie in 1935, you're gonna see that type of thing try like tried to be done a lot of times after this, uh, and certainly I don't, yeah. I'm not sure if you see it done 
quite this well, at least the build up part, uh, very often. So like that was good. You know, that, I, I thought there was a lot going for this movie stylistically. And may I actually say something? I feel that that scene actually made Groucho work because you could feel his uh, exasperation <laughs> and his. <laughs> he was almost the straight man in, yeah. in that one. It, it, yeah, that is weird, and it, it worked for me anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like it. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna give style one. I think we all are right. I feel you. Yep. All right, and recommendations, Steve. Uh, yeah. I I you know what I am gonna recommend this movie. Uh, if you're gonna watch a uh, Marx Brothers movie, especially, check out this one. I I I so I'll be I'll be honest. I've only seen the two. I've seen Duck Soup and I've seen uh, Night at the Opera. This one is definitely the one to watch of those two. I think. Um, I know a lot of people feel differently, but. Well, those are the two that are AFI list. <laughs> this, yeah. But this one, I think, really put together a whole uh, movie experience, whereas Duck Soup felt more fragmented and mm-hmm. just um, like it was a vehicle for Groucho Marx to make jokes, whereas this actually had a story that was... It had, it had a better through line, we'll say. And... Um, yeah, I I say check it out. I it's it was a movie well worth watching. I I didn't mind spending the hour and a half watching this one. Now I kind of minded it, so I'm giving this a pretty decent score. I think so far, if I'm uh, doing it correctly, but I I might end up not recommending. Like here's here's my rant. I suppose I understand why it's on the AFI list. I understand that yes, it's culturally relevant to American cinema. Sure. However, just the march of time in society means I don't find it all that enjoyable. And if someone said, hey, I think, I'm think i thinking of watching a Mark Brothers movie. <laughs> Should I watch A Night in the Opera? I'd be like, if you want to, but I'm not going to sit there and watch it with you. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> If you're inviting me over, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so like, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I, it's hard to, like, again, come down on this one trying to remove my personal bias against this. Well, this is the general. one question that I think you can put your personal bias into yes. I, I don't well, want to like try yeah. and convince you I otherwise. wouldn't recommend I'd be like again I academically can respect it at a distance but as a visceral film watcher I, I do not wish to watch this film again and I would be okay with it actually going off the list and again re- like as we often m- discuss here and there like putting something else in its place so like like I said that's my sort of take on it so mm-hmm. I'm probably going to end up giving a zero for recommendation here fair enough uh, I'm more on your side Steve-O in a way that if someone asked me, should I watch? I want to watch a Marx Brothers movie. Which <laughs> one should I watch? Like this one, certainly. And considering that both AFI lists, and I looked up a couple of lists of it, mm. and Duck Soup and this are always one and two. So um, I definitely say a Night of the Opera. Now, if someone asked me, should I see a comedy from this era or a comedy? I would say give something else. But go watch Charlie I Chaplin. Yes, exactly. See, yeah, Charlie Chaplin so much better. Uh, <laughs> Damn right he is. And in fact, I would just randomly pick a Charlie Chaplin film rather than the best <laughs> of Marx Brothers. However, I am going to recommend it as the Marx Brothers movie to be seen. If you're going to watch a Marx Brothers film, yeah. Then. And I could see why this is on the AFI. I would take Duck Soup off, no doubt about that. But yeah, I'm. I'm gonna go. Just gonna go with a recommendation for Marsh Brothers movie. Mm-hmm. I'm meaning a seven point six. All right, uh, Stevo and I gave it an eight, and Scott gave it a seven, meaning seven point six six. And that's. I'm okay with yeah. us giving it that overall. Yeah, it's fine. Much better than what we gave uh, Duck Soup. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Right. Well, anyway, uh, no. I'm Jonathan Emanzer here with Sir Mosi. Have a good night. And Scott Thurlow. And we'll see you next time, Nani Nani. Editing and engineering by Christopher Morgan. Music by Christopher Morgan. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows. And on Facebook and Twitter for updates.